Okay guys, so this is the Beat 707 Next. So it's a new card I'm working on. So we're going to, I'm just going to solder everything on the card very quickly so you have an idea how to work with that. So I have put the resistors here. This is a 220 ohms resistor. Uh, below here is a 1K, 1 kilo ohms, then a 33 and a 10 ohms, and then a 10K ohms, 10 kilo ohms resistor. This one is actually 1.2. I ran out of 1.0. So I'm just going to quickly do a solder run here. Nothing fancy. Not the best solder guy in the world, but it works. Don't mind my hand shake like crazy. Okay. So this board works with the Winbound flash memory and uh, works with the, the three other buttons and LED boards as you can see on other videos from our, our site and it works pretty great. Just a few corrections here and there. This is boards for me, so I'm not really being very careful because uh, I just want to test it out. I'm pretty sure you guys do a better soldering job than me, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'm not so bad. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's silly. Let's fix that. Just going to put more solder there. Okay, that's better. Because it's a small resistor, so yeah, that's okay. That's not so bad. Let me take off all the crap here. And uh, this is the bar that it's going to attach to. So there are three boards. And this header here is going to attach to this header here. So let me solder the USB now. The USB is just for power, not for data. Just power. You can see that just the power is being used, not the data lines. If you look at the traces at least. But this you have to be careful not to short the traces. So okay, the USB is there. Let's do one of these guys. This is the socket for the 80 mega. You can see here from the square, every, everywhere is a circle, but here is a square. That's the place for the notch. Now for pin, z pin 1, in this case. Okay, this is a bit tricky. Sorry, I think my temperature is too low. Let me raise. I'm going to have some problems with the voltage regulator because this board is 3 volts and the voltage regulator I got is a bit too big for this board but uh, I'm going to figure something out I guess 
These traces are shorted on the board, so don't worry. But this not. Uh, short, short. Let me check for other shorts. Shorts are not very good. Oh, come on. So many pains. Go, go. Let's see if no shorts were done. Okay, that's good. And this layout flat. So let me show this guy here. The legs are too big for my holes there. I couldn't find the normal ones with the small legs, so I'm just going to cut it and place it like this. But first I'm going to put the capacitors from under the board instead. So then I can lay down the capacitors flat. Always clean the tip of your soldering iron and don't use a too high temperature otherwise it's going to mess up with the the chip and ruin the chip. Okay, that looks good. I'm just picking this up and putting it in the trash because I don't want to for it to glue on the board somehow and make a short or something like that. It's, I know it's a bit of neat picking but okay now this one is tricky. I have to put some soldering on the pads first. Ah, I touched my soldering iron on the socket, you can see there. Stupid! And then you put some... ...chin there. It's already getting hot in my hand. Okay, it's a bit crooked, but it's not a problem. As long as it stays on the bar and that, and don't touch the bottom pads, because uh, later on when I go to my electronics market, I'm going to try and find the small guy, because this doesn't consume a lot of power. Okay, again, look at the square and the circles. The square is pin one on the socket is the notch on the socket let me put something behind it so I can push it through okay where did I touch it now So this is a very quick board to solder. It's going to be more uh, work actually to program it, but that's going to be on another video and not this video. Because this is just for the board soldering. Okay. Now the MIDI connectors. Not no secrets here, just 
put in place like that. Nothing fancy. Just find a way to for them to push it. If it's all flat, yeah, it's all flat. So let's continue. Come on, melt it. Okay. You can see that it takes some time for the solder to melt because. These pads are very thick. So again, this is a simple board, but it's, it has everything you need, mid out, mini in the connections, the flash memory and in this case, case I didn't use a SD card because the SD card has a few problems to, to really run well that's uh, why on the B707 Micro I use 28 megas to be able to run with the SD card and the sequencer so this is the electrolytic capacitor, it has a minus and it goes on the minus on the board. Be very careful with that otherwise the board is going to short and the capacitor can even explode if, if you short it with a lot of current. In this case I don't think it would but Almost. Okay, so now I have some more capacitors. This is where the flash memory will go. I'll get in a minute. One capacitor, two capacitors. Ah, come on, go, and there is one missing there, I'm not going to populate that one, that's for the ground, the MIDI, you don't really need that one, unless you have, you keep having some MIDI input problems, because that goes from the ground of the MIDI, and usually the MIDI ground is not even connected, so don't bother with that one. Unless you really need to. So let's trim again the, the small wires. Let's inspect the board for any problems before we continue. Let me clean my table. And then we're going to do the final ones. Okay, so now this guy, this is the opto oscillate opto isolator. <laughs> Sorry, not oscillator. I'm going to adjust the legs a bit. 
again the square points to the as, as people say shaft or notch but it's, it's the pin zero which has also an, uh, a small circle there in pointing that out so in some cases it's, it's, a, it's a circle in some cases a square so the, the rule here is just to look for something different Okay, that guy is in. Now the diode, diode, I don't know how the guys say it. Again, there is a marker there, so you can check the marker on the diode. It has to follow the same marker. Otherwise, MIDI input is not going to work. And finally, the jumpers. Why we have jumpers? So we have three jumpers. So we have the MIDI input jumper, MIDI output jumper, and the power jumper. Um, if you don't plan on programming the board and messing with the program in the board itself, you can just short MIDI input and MIDI output uh, and not worry about jumper. Just put some solder there and short. And there's the power jumper. If you are not also using the power, you're just connecting directly to the to the USB power adapter. You can just short also. Or if you're using a power on and off button or something like that in your case, you can use this for that purpose exactly. It's just Small jumper, nothing fancy. And two more jumpers for MIDI input, MIDI output. Because if you're programming the board using the FTDI connection, like creating your, your own hex or something like that, you have to disable MIDI input and output using the jumpers so the board can be programmed in place. That happens. <laughs> Usually you have to use two hands for that. So we'll just put some solder. Now you finish up. That's one way to do it. It's impressive of how bad sometimes it works a few things out anyway so this part is pretty much done so I add my two capacitors here on the bottom there's no problem because I'm going to use a spacer to raise the board like this two others three others boards so it's going to be raised and like this so the next step is to populate the 80 mega, the flash, and to program the board. Then I'm going to just put wires on the main header here and connect here to the other board. So thanks for watching.